Number 38. Solve part B of example 6.6 .6 using AC equals V squared over R. So letter B said, calculate the centripetal acceleration needed to keep the moon in its orbit, assuming circular orbit about a fixed Earth, and compare it with the value of the acceleration due to Earth's gravity that you've just found. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the picture. Here is, here is the Earth, and over here is the moon. All right, and they are separated by uh, this partic uh, particular distance from center to center. Right? These are values you can find in tables in your book or online. These uh, values need to be known or given. All right, and um, the other thing that needs to be known or given is the um, lunar period of, of revolution, meaning it takes the moon, all right, about 27.3 days to make a full rotation around the Earth. Okay. All right, so now knowing these facts, again, we have to calculate the centripetal force, right, that this moon is experiencing, which would be the downward, you know, force pointed towards the center of the Earth. All right, and we need to use this formula. So why don't we start with that? So centripetal acceleration would be equal to the uh, tangential velocity or the, or the linear velocity squared divided by the radius. So the linear velocity or the tangential velocity of what? Well, of the object that's rotating, okay, of the moon, that is. So I need to find the, um, so in order to find uh, the acceleration uh, due to gravity or the centripetal acceleration that the moon is experiencing here, I need to know the linear velocity of the moon, all right, divided by then the radius between the moon and the uh, rotating point, which is here. Well, do I know the linear velocity? No, uh, but I did give you, right, and you do know the um, angular velocity. So you might say, well, can I connect linear to angular? And yes, you can. You have to know this formula over here on the right-hand side. That's the connection point. So this tells us that the linear velocity is equal to the radius of curvature multiplied by that angular velocity. So guess what I can do now? I can take that and plug it on in. Okay. So now when we do that, we have the centripetal acceleration being equal to r omega, right, the radius multiplied by the angular velocity, this whole thing is squared all over r. Mathematically, that simplifies to now r omega squared. You probably have seen this formula come up a whole bunch of times now. It might be a good one to memorize so you don't have to keep deriving them. In any case, all I need to now do is plug in the values, right? But you might say, okay, great, remember radius, that's a distance, so therefore we plug in meters. I have kilometers, that's not a big deal, just keep that in mind. And then angular velocity, we need radians per second. Uh, well, we have revolutions per day. Not a big deal. We just got to do a conversion, right? So let's do that down here. One revolution per 24, uh, excuse me, 27.3 days. Revolutions on the bottom. Radians on the top. Two pi radians in one revolution. Say bye-bye to radian. Day on the top, hour on the bottom. We know that there are 24 hours in a day. Bye-bye to day. And then we go hours on the top. Seconds on the bottom, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Just remember that it's a little faster way to do these conversions. And voila, we have radians per second. So it's just 2 pi, right? 2 pi divided by parentheses 27.3 times 24 times 3,600. So 2.66, all right? 2.66 times 10 to the minus 6. Oops, minus 6. And that, remember, is in radians per second. All right, so this is your angular velocity. So let's simply plug it in. So centripetal acceleration will be equal to the radius. Remember the radius, here it is, but it has to be in meters. So simply just multiply this value by three or simply just add three to the exponent, okay? So we get 3.84 times 10 to the eighth multiplied by now 2.66, oops, 2.66 times 10 to the minus six. Remember it's squared. So now all we have to simply do is calculate. So we get 3.84 times 10 to the eighth multiplied by 2.66 times 10 to the minus six squared. And we get 2.72, 2.72 times 10 raised to the one, two, three, minus three. And that is in meters per second squared. All right, and that is the answer to this question. Guys, thanks for joining. Please remember to subscribe. And I will see you in the next problem. Be well.